And joining me now is the Vance from Trump v. Vance, former Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance. He's now a partner at the law firm Baker McKenzie. So let me let me start here. The, the case you won is cited here in this request from the Trump team, where they actually quote from the dissenting opinion. I'm interested in your thought on that. But they quote, criminal prosecution can come about only after the Senate's judgment, not during or prior to the Senate trial. We've heard this argument before, but what do you make of it and the ways in which you were referenced in this filing tonight? You were in there quite a few times. Uh, good evening, Jen. Thank you for having me on. My general reaction is, is we have been here before. Uh, in our case, after several years of litigation uh, started by former President Trump, uh, the Supreme Court ruled, just as you indicated, that uh, a sitting president can be investigated. But that's mm -hmm. not the first time the Supreme Court has said that. It said that right. in Nixon. It said that, mm -hmm. it said that in the Clinton case. So our case merely, I think, reaffirmed, but in a very strong way, that President Trump is not immune from responding to subpoenas uh, or, or lawful requests for evidence, whether it's from a federal prosecutor or a state prosecutor. So that's where we were when I was district attorney, and we ultimately received those records, and uh, the Trump Organization and its CFO was subsequently indicted for tax fraud. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it goes almost without saying that if a president is, as the Supreme Court holds, that a president is not immune from investigation while he is president, it follows that a president is not immune from prosecution when he is no longer president. Uh, and. I think that uh, uh, the Court of Appeals decision got it right. Uh, I don't know what the Supreme Court will do. Mm. Obviously, this is a different Supreme Court than the Supreme Court we argued before. There are more Trump appointees. Uh, on the other hand, this, even in our case, uh, I ultimately think that no one among the nine justices disagreed with the proposition that a sitting president could be investigated for criminal misconduct. There were some complaints about whether you know, there were some complaints, uh, uh, but they weren't on the they weren't about the substance of the principle mm -hmm. that you just articulated. Yeah, I mean, as you, as you just said, which is in a very important point, there's ample precedent here, even before your case about presidential immunity. It's been argued many times before. Chief Justice is still the chief justice of the Supreme Court, uh, who is the one I just quoted at the end of that. I know you said you don't want to predict, and I know most people aren't in the prediction game. But even looking just at the law here, do you think they would have any legal case to be made to grant him this immunity? I think the precedent that has been set, which was reaffirmed very strongly by Justice Roberts in Trump v. Vance, would lead the Supreme Court to be comfortable with saying that the president is not immune uh, from prosecution for prior acts while he is no longer president. I think it's not debated, at least in the federal context, that the president wouldn't be charged by federal prosecutors while he is president or she is president. Uh, but that's not where we are. And I think we set a, uh, I frankly think we set a very dangerous president, precedent uh, where we permit someone who uh, was president, who deserves protection from the law and safeguards that ordinary citizens don't have. And he got all of them and more in every matter that he's taken to the Supreme Court. Mm. But ultimately, as all the justices have said uh, from decades ago till to 2020, uh, the president is at heart a citizen. And uh, when he or she is a citizen, uh, they are not immune from responding to law as any other citizen would be. And it would be terrible if that wasn't so. Uh, absolutely. That's how our judicial system is supposed to work. I mean, you're also one of the rare people who have been involved in a case where Trump claimed immunity to deny access to records. I mean, one of the things that struck me here is just this continued argument that he is above the law, that he is immune from the law in many ways. What do you think, studying him as you have, it tells you about his view of how the law applies to him, if at all? Well, ultimately, I think what it's done is uh, with his ability to fund cases, it just, you know, he's been able to achieve uh, delay through uh, appeals and appeals. Uh, but I don't think much of the principle. I've yet to see a court decision that thinks much of the principle. Uh, so what I would say, Jen, is uh, it, he's remarkably consistent, but not very successful. Mm.
That's that is fair. Let, let's let's see if that is continues to be the case. You know, one of the questions here, as I just outlined, is this this, this delay tactic, right? And and I wanted to ask you, as somebody who's obviously uh, watched the legal system, been involved at a high level in the legal system, whether the Supreme Court looks at or thinks about that. I mean, if they take this case, it could be delayed past the election. Do they factor that in? Well, I I can't speak knowingly about what the Supreme Court justices think. But I think they clearly move quickly when they want to, as we've just seen uh, you know, with, their with, their, with their arguments in, on the issue of whether or not President Trump should be disqualified from being on the uh, presidential ballot in California and perhaps subsequently Maine. So they, in our case as well, uh, it moved at lightning speed from the district court decision in, in our favor to the Court of Appeals decision in our favor and then to the Supreme Court in what at the time I would say would be lightning speed. It was probably within a year. Um, so, you know, in court, that's, you know, that's quick. But when the Supreme Court decides and the federal judges decide they want to decide something because it's urgent, they'll do it. Now, there may be reasons why perhaps the Supreme Court doesn't want to rush to a judgment in this case and would prefer to have this decided at a, you know, at a later time. Um, I, I think the Supreme Court is not immune from politics. Uh, it, it is, in one sense, our most political court, uh, as well as uh, our most learned court. So we shouldn't expect that they would be uh, uh, immune from looking at the landscape and understanding the political consequences of their, of their decisions. We will all be watching closely. Always enjoy having you on and talking to you about all of this. Thank you so much for joining me this evening, Cy Vance. Appreciate it.